Hello and welcome back to the Kinesiology lecture series. In lecture number 13 of Kinesiology, we will study about the free exercises. As we have seen in our previous lecture, the free exercises are the free exercises are the type of active exercises. These are the active exercises that are performed by the patients on muscular efforts and are only under the force of gravity. They have no external assistance or resistance force. These type of exercises are used for the induction of relaxation, for the maintenance of muscle tone, to increase the muscle power, for the development of coordination and the establishment of confidence in the patient. In our next lecture, we will discuss the advantages and the disadvantages of the free exercises in detail. Now the success of these free exercises mainly depends upon these three factors. First one is the suitable exercise. The type of exercise the therapist is prescribing to the patient. It totally depends upon the purpose of the exercise and the requirement of the patient. And the second thing is the degree of coordination from the patient. The patient must be cooperative so these exercises can help him to achieve the goal. Last but not the least, the skills of the instructors. A skillful instructor can produce successful results. Now the type of free exercises. There are two types of free exercises, the local and the generalized. As the name indicates, the local free exercises are the ones that are localized to a specific area. They can be designed primarily to produce some local effect to a joint or a group of a muscle. For example, flexion and extension on a joint. And the generalized free exercises are the ones that are generalized to many joints or and the muscles all over the body. Their effect is widespread. For example, the running movement. In the running, the many joints of the lower limb and the upper limb are involved along with the muscle groups around those joints. These generalized exercises are further divided into subjective and objective free exercises. In the subjective one, the focus is on the accuracy of the performance with less anatomical movements in full range. May the patient not complete the range of motion but he should perform the exercise accurately with the, with the focus on the form and the pattern of the exercise. In the objective generalized free exercises, a goal is formed and the focus is on achieving that goal. But there should be no compromise on the quality and the accuracy of the movement. For example, to touch a point on the wall while standing with stretching your hand without compromising the body posture. Now the techniques of the free exercises. The first one is the starting position. The starting position is the one that has maximum postural efficacy. Every exercise has its own starting position in which the patient is more comfortable and having the maximum postural efficacy as in the start of the exercises the patient is resistant to perform movements so he must be in the easiest position or in which the gravity effect on the movement is minimum Then the second step is the instruction to the patient. The patient is instructed about the pattern and the purpose of the exercise. In this 
the patient is also instructed about how the exercise has to be performed either the therapist perform the exercise himself or passively move the part of the patient to teach him the pattern of the movement next is the speed of the exercise with which speed the patient should do the exercise is depends upon the patient's condition and also in the start speed should be low and increased progressively the natural rhythm should be maintained and later on the speed can be increased then the duration of the exercise it also depends upon the capacity of the patient mostly 3 bouts of practice for each exercise are used with short rest period to avoid fatigue if you like my video then give it a thumbs up like and share and don't forget to press the bell icon thank you